Good afternoon and ladies and gentlemen. I hope everyone is safe and taking care. My name is Kashika Charbar from Nuremberg, Messe, India. And I would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you at the ABIS Knowledge Summit. Asia's broadcasting and entertainment show comprises of the Broadcast India Show, Cat India Trade Show and Content India Show. At the ABIS Knowledge Summit, we look forward to bringing to you engaging panel discussions, interesting fireside chats and interactive product demos today and tomorrow. DWDM Solutions by Mr. Piyush Dedia, CTO of Tilling Networks Private Limited. Mr. Dedia has over 18 plus years experience in the cable and network industry, providing expertise in the IP, FTTH, FTTX solutions and IP television technology segments. He has a KNX certification in automation and an advanced certification in networking and communications. He is also a consultant and designs networks for ISPs and cable operators. Before I hand over to Mr. Dedia, just one note to all our attendees, we have, will have a Q&A session at the end of this. So please send your Q&As, your questions in the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Mr. Dedia, the screen is yours. Yeah, thank you, Kashika. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Yeah, I'm Piyush from Optiling Networks Private Limited. Uh, before starting the session today, I would really, from Optiling, I would like to appreciate and thanks to all the cable operators team, the internet service provider team, the MSO team, to provide the bandwidth internet to the end users during the pandemic time. You are also like uh, the warriors because of your great efforts and the connectivity and the new users connectivity you have provided during the pandemic it is really appreciable so you are like a warrior so we would like to thank for you your support because of your efforts the people were able to see work from home the schools from home so we would like to thank you so now uh, i would start the session on the dwdn why I thought the DWDM? Because during this last 18 months of pandemic, the bandwidth consumption has increased a lot. And the backbone has to be modified, has to be upgraded. So for that, the DWDM would be one of the solutions where we can increase the bandwidth of the backbone, the core network of the ISPs, the cable operators and the MS. So first, before starting from the DWDM, what are the today topics I will cover? It's like introduction to first the basic WDM, then what is CWDM, what is DWDM, what are the components in the DWDM, different type of the network topologies used in the DWDM, then the applications and more uh, useful will be the solutions on the DWDM. And what are the optiling products we provide for the DWDM? So first we start with the WDM session. What is WDM? Basically WDM is a technology where the number of different optical signals are mucked onto a single optical fiber by using different wavelengths. That is the different colors of the laser light. Basically, one signal have one color of light, other signal have other colors. So we can combine all signals and this signal can be transferred on the single fiber. So this saves our fiber. So this is what is basic WDM. The example is the single fiber SFPs you use into the network that use 13, 10 and 15, 50 wavelengths. So on the single fiber, we can transmit as well as receive the signal. So this is based on the WDM. So I will now move to what are the different types of WDM. One is the CWDM, that is a, we call it as a coarse wavelength division multiplexing. Second is a DWDM, dense wavelength division multiplexing. We will uh, discuss more on today on the DWDM. And third is a PON WDM, uh, basically passive optical network uh, WDM. This is used for in the 
pawn network for the triple play services you must be running the pawn adfas and all that so this is based on the pawn wdn so i will now move to what is uh, cwdn basically cwdn we course call as a, a course wavelength division multiplexing uh in this we have total 16 channels or eight channels on the higher frequency from the 1210 1270 to 1410 and other is from 1470 to 1610 in this basically we use the spacing of 20 nm between the two different uh, wavelengths so for example in this diagram we can see there are eight wavelengths used to transfer the four different signals from location a to b for example if this sfp is are 1.25 gig then we transfer four gig of traffic on the single five four different services you can call it or four different bandwidths you can call it so that will be transmit on the single five so in the cwdm there are 16 frequencies 16 wavelengths sorry 41270 to 1410 is the first eight wavelength and second eight wavelength is 1470 to 1610 so major in the network we are be using more of the 1470 to 1610 so this is about the cwdm okay now we move to the dwdm uh, the in the cwdm there is a limit of the traffic transfer there is a limit of the channel that is only 16 channels so if now more data required so what to do we have to go with the dwdm basically in dwdm there are two type one is 50 gigahertz and 100 second is 100 gigahertz in 50 gigahertz we get a 80 channels their spacing is 0.4 nm between the two channels while in 100 gig it is the spacing of 0.8 nm between the two different channels uh in cwdm it was the 20 nm spacing while in the dwdm we have 0.4 and 0.8 so more number of channels so more traffic can be pushed from one location to another using the dwdm technology so this is the dwdm so i will just again go through it the dwdm use 40 channels at 100 gigahertz and 80 channels at 50 gigahertz in dwdm we represent the wavelength as a channel 1 2 3 4 that way because the wavelength uh, to remain is a little bit difficult in this because it is along the point so in dwdm we call it channel 1 2 channel 60 that way we define it for like in 100 gigahertz we have channel 1 2 channel 40 so one channel represent one wavelength so in dwdm there are two type of band used basically c band and l band c band is 11525 nm to 1565 nm and l band is from 1565 nm to 1625 nm in our industry basically we use more of the c band where the wavelength starts from 1525 to 1565 so the more advantage of the dwdm is that i can transfer more traffic as well as more distance can be achieved using the optical amplifier how we can achieve it i will talk on the later so the difference between the cwdm and the dwdm is that i get more number of channels and i can transfer to a longer distance so these are the two differences in the cwdm and the dwdm so this is uh, is the dwdm uh, block diagram so for uh, what are the major components in this block diagram first on the left hand side we call it as a transponders then is the attenuators multiplexers amplifiers demultiplexers again the transponder so what is exactly the transponder we call as a shortcut as otu optical transponders unit the function of the optical transport unit is to convert the normal optical signal into the color wavelength signal 
that is in the dwdm wavelength it will convert to particular wavelength particular channel in the dwdm if i give it like a 10 gig of normal sfp input i will convert that 10 gig normal sfp signal to the dwdm wavelength so different uh, services we will convert to the different wavelength so this is the a uh, function of the transponder the attenuators now are inbuilt in the transponder itself so attenuator function is to like equalize all the powers if some sfp is high power some is low we will equalize all the powers using the attenuator but this function is now into the otu itself then comes the multiplexer where all this different wavelengths will be combined into the multiplexer and this multiplex output signal we put it into the amplifier for the longer distance if the distance is shorter we might not require the amplifier but for the longer distance we use the amplifier that's the post amplifier pre amplifier pre amplifier is like at the receiving end we will go in detail in later then uh, it's the demultiplexer basically this will demultiplex again all the sig optical signal into their respective colors and so that can be again input to the transponder and this again transponder will convert back to the normal optical signal so this way the total function of the dwdm works so i will just uh, go one by one what are the different this and how it works so key components i told you like transponders multiplexers amplifiers and demultiplexers so what is a transponder as you can see on the diagram there is one is the client side and one is the line side basically the client side is the different signals which will be coming from the switches or the routers of the different sfps maybe 10 gig sfps or 1.25 kb that i will we will the transponder will convert to particular wavelength particular channel or the color and this will be forwarded again to the mux so the transponder function is that from one other convert signal from one form to other that is electrical to optical and vice versa they accept the inputs from the different physical media and the protocols in the various format and map them into the different wavelength so that means that we can take a different uh, signal of the media different protocol like multicast protocol or normal udp protocol or a ca tv signal also so this will be inputted from the client side and this we will convert to again on the dwdm channel that is particular wavelength so this will be transferred to the multiplexer so i will move from this to multiplexer basically multiplexer combines the several laser signals that is coming from the otu of the different wavelength to converge to the single fiber so this is a, again a wdm example where i am converting the multiple channel signal and converting into the single fiber so this will transfer over the single fiber then comes the amplifiers the amplifiers we will use as per our requirement into the network if the distance is more we will have more amplifiers like there are three type of amplifiers one is the post amplifier we call it as a ba also ba amplifiers then the line amplifiers la amplifiers then is the pre amplifier pa amplifier so what is the post amplifier uh basically the post amplifiers are placed directly after the transmitters so it's at the say location h c i will put a post amplifier depending on how much distance i want to cover and what is the loss of the fiber and all that we design accordingly the post amplifier then in the line amplifier the distance is more i want to repeat the signal retransmit the signal then i will use the line amplifier so it will be placed middle of the location between two locations then is a pre amplifier pre amplifier are 
place before the DWDM, before the demultiplexer. Basically, this will again increase the signal quality so that the DWDM can receive the signal properly. So we will have the three different type of amplifier. The maximum amplifier range comes is around 22 dBm. And this, uh, it depends on the requirement. We have to customize what dB of post amplifier, pre amplifier, and the line amplifier we can use. So this is a function of the amplifier. So the, uh, this is amplifier play a uh, most important role compared to the CWD. In CWDM, we cannot amplify the signal because that wavelengths are different. While in this, we can use the 1550 wavelength. So it's all of the 1550 wavelength. So I'm using the amplifiers to amplify the signal. So this is the advantage of the DWDM technology over the CWDM technology. So again, the demultiplexer, so the signal receiving at the other end has to be demultiplexed. So it's the opposite function of the multiplexer. So one signal we will have split into the multiple colors that is again, and that will go to the transponders. So again, the transponders will be converting back to the client signal. So now after this, I move to the different type of the topologies uh, using the DWDM network. Uh, first is a simple one like point to point. Say I want to carry the signal from point A to point B over the distance of 20 kilometer, 40 kilometer, 100 kilometer. Then I can use this where I want to carry the traffic of multiple uh, 10 gigs or multiple 1 gig. So I will use this point to point topology to cover from one location to other location. Another scenario is like a ring topology. A ring topology basically say at the control loop, I, have, I am pumping a 40 gig of traffic. And at the location two, there is a requirement of 10 gig. Location three, it is a requirement of 10 gig. Location four, again, the requirement is of 10 gig. So in the ring topology, I will drop one 10 gig at location two. At location three, another 10 gig will be dropped. At location four, another 10 gig. So this way, we call this as an OADM, optical at drop uh, multiplexing technology. So in the ring topology, at the first end, we'll have multiple bandwidth. We can drop at the different location. While in the first scenario of the point to point topology, it was connecting between the two locations. So total of 40 gig to 40 gig or 100 gig to 100 gig from one location to another. I'm transferring all the data traffic. While in the ring topology, I will drop the different uh, traffic at the different location. So this is the difference uh, between the two topologies. Okay. Now we'll move to the, where we can use the DWDM technology. Currently the bandwidth has increased between the two locations. So in that scenario, there is a shortage of fiber. We can use in that scenario to transfer more services on the single fiber between the locations. In that application, we can use the DWDM for the long distance and the high bandwidth, the DWDM will be preferable over the CWDM. So these are the different uh, applications we can use the DWDM. Now I will just discuss on some of the live cases of our customers. I will not name the customers, but uh, say for one of the customers, one was to carry 40 gig of traffic from one location to another. And the distance was approximately 75 kilometers, but they have only single phone. They cannot, uh, if they want to go for other fiber cable, they have to pay the rent every month. So that is again a recurring cost to the ISP or the cable option or the MSO. So in that scenario, DWDM was a perfect solution to them where uh, they use a single fiber to carry the 40 gig. But the distance in the CWDM we were facing is the 75 kilometers. We are not able to transfer it. There was a loss in the fiber. So we suggested the DWDM where different uh, channels, we use eight channels. 
so two channels for one data this for 110 gig of traffic so 4 into 10 gig customer provide us the four 10 gig inputs to the our otu we converted into the particular channels of the dwdn then the mux we are use the ba the forward amplifier pre amplifier and again for the pa for the post amplifier so that is a pre amplifier first is the ba means the post amplifier pm is the pre amplifier because the data is always two way so we have used both the transmitter for like uh, channel 29 will be communicating with the channel 45 at other end so that channel 45 amplification again will be done at the location a so this is the block diagram of for transferring 4 into 10 that is 40 gig traffic over single fiber for 75 km if the distance is small we can design the amplifiers or we can have one uh, middle uh, pre amplifier also a line amplifier solution where we can again increase the distance from 1a to b so this was one of the solutions is working live second is uh, the customer requirement was having a 100 gig of traffic and uh, the customer requirement was to transfer the multicast traffic that is multicast traffic of the for the cable tv where they can have the edge com at the opposite end to convert to the ca tv signal so this multicast traffic is of uh, on the base the ip form second they have the internet traffic also increasing so they want to carry the internet traffic also and third if anything happens on the edge com so they want to have a redundancy on the 1550 ca tv signal also so we have a special 1550 ca tv transmitter with the particular channel number 32 for this so this way we were having 100 gig of traffic plus one cable tv signal of 1550 transfer over 40 km to other location so this way in this scenario also we can use the dwdm where the requirement was for uh, 10 into 10 gig the data was of the internet multicast and along with that we carry the cable tv signal also on this solution so this was our second requirement uh, then uh, one of more uh, requirement is now because the traffic has increased in the isp segment so the requirement was for the 200 gig so they give us a input from their core router of 100 gig so in that again we use a 40 km distance we use again the amplifiers and we design the solution for them and this demo has been success now it will be implemented on the field in uh, some days few days so this again a 200 gig some scenarios were 400 gig also traffic requirement is coming up for the isp so in that all we can use the dwdm solution so dwdm has a more advantage for a more distance and more traffic so i gave the examples of like basic 10 40 gig 100 gig and 200 gig different distances 40 km 75 we can have more signals more distance also but for that we uh, we have to design according to your requirement and all so these are the different solutions uh, uh, now i will just again explain the benefit like uh, capacity increases using the dwdm large aggregated transmission capacity we can transfer it upgradeability we can uh, increase it without laying additional fiber so i don't have to lay additional fiber fiber cable or i don't have to lease another fiber cable to put more data so the advantage of the dwdm then the scalability to add new nodes i can add new nodes into the network so i add one pop location and again i can increase uh, my bandwidth capacity the network transparency that is i have a different formats of data on the protocol so i told you the ca tv was a different protocol signal the multicast is a different protocol format the internet data is different protocol format so we can have the network transparency in the cd different uh, data rate format can be transfer on the dwd and the manageability this is uh, like we call it as the acute dwdm and the manageability so we can manage 
the chassis what are the optical power it is receiving at other end what is the losses and everything can be measured and manage it in through this dwdm solution so i will now just uh, give the brief introduction on our uh, different products of the optilink like uh, we have the one ru chassis to of transfer of 200 gig of traffic then if the requirement is for more traffic we can have two ru chassis if more than the 1200 gig of traffic we have ru 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 chassis so in this chassis we can have the otu card the transponder card we can have the multiplexer card we can have the demultiplexer card we can have the amplifiers and the final output will be on the single fiber going from one location to another so these are the different uh, solutions uh, we have it uh, we do even provide the passive dwdm solution where we have the 16 channel mux dmux 32 channel mux dmux and we have the dwdm sfps of 40 km and 80 km the difference between the active and the passive is that passive i cannot manage it and it will be integrated the otu will be outside the mux will be stand alone device the amplifiers we cannot put it inside this same solution so this passive is in the small distance and everything we can go for it but in active if you want to have more distances and more traffic the active dwdm solution will be the preferable over the passive one so this is um, and from myself uh, if you have any queries please let us know we can answer on that thank you so much mr deetia let's take a few questions from our attendees i would like to introduce mr manoj madhavan editor of satellite and cable tv magazine the official publication of the scat india trade show who will be moderating the q and a for us today manoj over to you thank you kashika thank you mr piyush for a interesting session uh i'll straight head into the questions uh what is the maximum distance we can cover in point to point uh, mr piyush uh in the active dwdm solution we can carry without any line amplifier using we can carry up to 100 km if we want to carry more distance then we can have the line amplifiers between the two locations then we can carry more distance of 1000 km also okay and how does the ring topology work in the w dwdm technology and what is the protocol which is used here uh in the ring topology what i have shown is like a dropping of the different wavelength we call it as oadm optical at drop uh, multiplexing where we'll have some uh, wavelength drop and some wavelength will be added so oadm will be used in that ring topology and what would be the cost of one pair of 10 into 10g system plus catv 1550 passing uh for the 10 into 10 gig uh, it depends on the distance what was the distance you are looking for you could specify the distance because that's they have not specified the distance here what is okay. the minimum uh, distance that starts around a 40 km uh, if around a 40 to 50 km it came come around a 25 lakh something 25. for point to point 400 gig of traffic okay and uh, coming to uh, another question Uh, how does the redundancy work in the dwdm network uh see there's a good question uh, basically between the this two location if there is a one fiber and uh, for if for redundancy we will require the two fiber like in the passive dwdm we have to have the parallel all the thing multiple dwdm multiple transponders multiple multiplexers everything has to be multiple but while in our active dwdm solution will insert one uh, olp card called as optical line protection card at both the end so basically the function of the olp card will be it will monitor the receiving power at both the end if the receiving power falls particular uh, this thing receiving power falls say for example minus uh, 20 then that will shift to the other part so olp card will take one input and it will have two outputs so two fiber will be going into the net field and again merging at the location so this way we can have a redundancy on the point to point 
That's interesting. Uh, the other question is, how can the thing be managed and monitored? Is it done uh, using DDM or is it using your own hardware? Uh, see, the SFPs have their own DDM as well as uh, we will provide uh, the NMS software based on the SNMP, so where we can monitor all the network together. And, and can you share some more light about the active DWDM devices? Uh, basically, we have three different chassis, like we told it, 1U, 2U, and the uh, 5U. So we have multiple cards, uh, OTU cards, that is transponder cards, where we can have 1.25 gig of inputs, 5 1.5 gig inputs, 10 into 5, uh, 10, uh, 5 into 10 gigs input. We have 2 into 100 gig input card. And then we have the amplifiers as to like for the different distances. So this is the total uh, solution from our side. That's interesting. Uh, now coming to the uh, rollout of the FTTH uh, across India. Now we have major players like Geo and Airtel also looking at tying up with the MSOs. So how does this all pan out in terms of the DWDM technology? Of course, the backbone, uh, if they, because as you know, the traffic has increased a lot during this pandemic time. So the core network has to be increased. So this, of course, the MSOs or the big ISPs have to increase the traffic between one location to another because they have a centralized hub. Say in Mumbai, if they have one hub at, uh, they are dairy and they want to cover whole Mumbai. Then they have to transfer all the bandwidth to all the locations. Of course, the traffic has increased. So we have to go for a DWDM solution. And how, how big is the challenge of latency in these uh, technology? Uh, can you repeat? How, how big is the challenge of latency as far as this technology uh, is concerned? No, there is no latency increase in the, this technology. Almost like CWDM, uh, many MSOs are using it and running from last 10 to 12 years. Right. So these are basically the passive sort of solution. It will not uh, delay the thing. I see. Interesting. I think uh, we've covered most of the questions. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to specify as far as the products or technology that you're offering? We, uh, we can no. give another five minutes, five to ten minutes. Uh, okay. That's I think I've already given the details of our this thing. And Perfect. if anything, they are welcome to our website is optilingnetwork.com. If any query, they can just mail at uh, me, Piyush at optilingnetwork.com. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Piyush, for the enlightening question answer session. I would now like to hand over to Kashika. Thank you so much, Mr. Vedia and Manoj. I'm sure our attendees uh, enjoyed this session and, you know, we at Abyss uh, Knowledge Summit would like to uh, thank you for logging in, all of them.